morning, Professor Deva. Good morning. You're welcome to City News. Merci. <laughs> Thank you. Um, please, may we meet you? Can you present yourself? Uh, of course. So, uh, I'm a researcher. Um, I'm also a professor. Uh, and I uh, like to share our findings uh, via uh, books or also conferences. A professor in what field? So, um, my, I'm teaching, for instance, uh, neurosciences at Sorbonne. Uh, but I'm also teaching uh, sensory marketing or luxury marketing, uh, engineering. Okay. So uh, I have a broad but still quite a, a sharp field of expertise, I would say. Yeah. Um, please, could you speak um, about the relationship, if they exist, and how strong it is between um, neuro, neurosciences and, um, you know, um, fashion, the world of um, sensation and choices. Yeah, so um, actually uh, um, among all the fields in neurosciences, I'm uh, very uh, interested in neuroendocrinology, which is actually the study of the influence of hormones on behavior. And uh, we did a lot of research for many brands and we um, also for good, you know, for uh, in the field of uh, obesity or diabetes, we made some discoveries, uh, and it was all linked to hormones. So it's a very fascinating field. And if we take uh, fashion, of course, fashion and luxury uh, are filled very influenced by the need for status. And it has been discovered that the need for status was a factor of the influence of prenatal testosterone. So men, women who were more influenced by testosterone when they were in the womb will be more into status if they have more of certain dopamine receptor called DRD2, DRD3. And this explains, for instance, that in Nigeria, people will be more into status than in Kenya, or that people in Dubai will be more into status than in Norway, even if both countries have petrol. So, you know, it's not just about the money, it's also about the need to climb the social ladder that some people will have more. And of course, fashion is a weapon of choice, you know, that's what you will show off. Uh, in the same way you show off a car, you will show off, you know, a nice watch or uh, a nice bag. So that's where busy is, and we are able to predict quite a lot in people's behavior, uh, from the color to the choice of the material, the fabric they like. Uh, it's all coming down to the type of receptor they have in their body, you know. If you are more sensitive to touch, you will prefer cotton. If you are less sensitive to touch, your criteria will change. You will like a fabric to be sleek, you know, instead of being fluffy. Same for color, you know, if you are far-sighted, near-sighted, you will be more irritated, more pleased by different colors. So that's the field uh, I'm busy with, and I'm glad I can share a bit about it with you. Well, this is, uh, this is, this is unexpected to me at least. Mm. Uh, it's brilliant. Do you mean to say that some of the choices we make are not influenced by our own, dedu you know, deductive and logical thinking? Mm. Are they? things we can't do anything about? Actually, it's uh, based on our perception, but the perception is based on the sensor we have. I'll give you an example. The first research was on coffee, you know. Um, our client was asking us, why do people like a strong coffee? Why do some people add milk, sugar, you know? I was like, yeah, why do people drink tea? And what we found out is like, um, if you cut one square centimeter of the tongue, and you count the taste buds. Some people have 10 taste buds. Some people have 1,100. The more you have taste buds, the more the food is intense. So the same cup of coffee, people with 10 taste buds, they will say, oh, it's watery. And people with 1,100 taste buds, they will be like, oh, this is disgusting, you know? So uh, then the memories you will build of what you ate, what you like, dislike, it's your own memories, but it's based on your perception. Because the first time you will taste something, your body will have a response to it that you cannot really control. Then you can decide to drink vodka in spite of it's disgusting, but each time you will drink it, it will burn your tongue. Some people, they drink alcohol, it's like milk. It's not burning their tongue at all. So that's the difference. So you can, you can still try to go against uh, your perception, but it's difficult. So what we see is with age, uh, when people feel less pressure of a group of friends, they come back to themselves and they say, you know what, I will drink tea, you know. Um, so that's what we observe. Okay, for the, uh, for the user's bias, mm -hmm. so to speak, um, is there a need for us to know what we, 
naturally like based on how we are wired mm. or is it something only for the big mm. brands who want to mm. increase their sales no i think it's Im especially important for people and i'm uh, glad you asked that because um, for instance i used to smoke very bad idea very stupid i was very young on top of it and uh, one day i decided to smoke so i i quit one day to the other without any help whatever a friend of mine saw that he said what you quit smoking like that i do it also i said yeah cool after a couple of years he had a headache like crazy with friends we went to the emergency room and then the doctor the intern looked at him and he looked at us he said did your friend stop smoking we say uh, quit smoking we say yeah how, how do you know he say yeah actually it's because of the removal of the cigarette now he's having headaches and stuff so he prescribed him some patches and we left and i was like yeah but i don't understand i didn't have that and so i was intrigued for many years i cannot sleep you know when i don't understand something i cannot sleep so i did research and what we discovered and we published it because i think this helps a lot of people is depending on the type of opioid receptors you have in your body you will be adapted you will be addicted to different substances. So my friend, he was addicted to nicotine. And these are some receptors called kappa that are also addicted to coffee, to peanuts. That's why, you know, in some bars, you cannot smoke, you have peanuts around. Or people eat sneakers, you know, not to whatever. And, but some other people who have mu receptor, they are addicted to sugar. And you have to know that in cigarettes, the cigarettes that sell the most, they have up to 10% sugar. Now the e-cigarette is even worse. You have even more sugar. So when I stopped smoking, I started eating more sugar because I was addicted to the sugar in the cigarette, not to the nicotine. Yeah? So, and it's the same receptor uh, for beta endorphin. That is what is produced when you do exercise or cacao or protein. So by knowing yourself, you know also what are the substitutes, how you can help yourself uh, because you cannot necessarily do like your friends are doing you are a different type of animal, you know? We are all different types of animals. So you need to know which one you are so that you can have the best strategy for yourself. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Far from fashion, but you know. Yes, but I mean, um, are you accessible to ordinary people? Can people reach out to you to ask certain questions about what I mean, what we talk about, yeah. how do people reach you? Do you have so, time for people? Yeah, so actually, um, mm, I have um, my way to uh, give time for people is to uh, publish books. You know, when I started doing these findings, I would qualify myself as a self made scientist. You know, um, I studied computer science, which has nothing to do with that, uh, but I learned, uh, actually, it was good. I learned on my own, I was not influenced by anything else. So that's why we made some discovery. For instance, we found out that some people hear four times louder than others. So we really made scientific discoveries. And this discovery, I always try to share them or via scientific poster at conferences or via books. So I published so far eight books. So uh, yeah, so you can find some books. You have one book, uh, The Right Sensory Mix, uh, that got a prize from the American Marketing Association. Um, another book, Designing Luxury Brands, if you are more into fashion and luxury. And both books, I'm very proud, are recommended by Philip Kotler. So you know, uh, that's really a chance, a chance for me because I teach in some MBA. Usually I recommend his book. So now I'm the lucky one. He's recommending my books. So usually I do that. I try to publish um, a maximum of things. And I try to publish via books because my publisher lets me write whatever I want to write. Uh, I found out that if I try to do peer review publishing, it's being censored, it's being filtered. You have to be nice with some other people. But I want to share the findings, you know, even if they are not politically correct. Uh, because when I found that, sugar was still popular. Now everybody's like, oh, sugar is bad. At that time, nobody said nothing about sugar, you know. So uh, I don't want to wait for the trend. I want to help the people now. Mm -hmm. So I found out that books is the best. Videos, I try also to publish some videos. Mm -hmm. So if you, uh, uh, you can follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, so um, I, I always try to, uh, to help when I can. Yeah. What we're going to do, we're going to publish a list of your books. We're going to... Um 
have it running on the oh, wait. screen. Oh, uh, uh, that's nice. That is brilliant. Yeah. And lastly, could you tell us a little about what your presentation today will be about? Yeah, sure. So today, uh, you know, it's all about uh, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot being uh, told about artificial intelligence. So for the record, uh, as I told you, I studied uh, computer science. So I was coding, you know, at the beginning of times, at the origin of times, I was coding. And uh, not so much changed, in fact, to be honest, you know, machine learning is around for 20 years or more so it didn't change so much what can make a dramatical change is our knowledge of people so what we don't understand is intelligence actually we try to code machines but we don't even understand our own decisions you know all, all the things we shared about people choices preferences is hardly documented so uh, my role is to help um, companies to better understand human intelligence and instead of trying to badly mimic it, uh, to add superpowers to it. And not only human intelligence, animals. You know, I think human, they're animals. We are all animals. And uh, most advances were made by looking at other animals. Oh, this animal can see infrared. We cannot see. We don't have night vision. Some have, not so bad, but some, it's a bit wacky. So we learn from looking at other species. We learn a lot. And we can develop systems that give us superpower. And I think cars is the example I will give. For many years, cars is giving us more and more superpowers. Some people cannot park so well, now they have an assistant. Some people are not so good at night vision, they have an assistant. But the more you understand the weaknesses of the different people, the more you can adapt. Because some people, they don't need the parking assistant. And some, it really changed their day. So that's what the talk will be about, to, uh, to have a better knowledge of people, in fact, exactly. before focusing so much on, on machines. This is impressive. Uh, what I take out of this is, if you feel inadequate in some aspects of your life, you shouldn't feel disappointed or really feel bad, because um, it's not a failure. And um, I guess a lot of people out there will be happy to know what this lady has been doing and the impact of her studies on uh, future development to do with things of this kind. We were happy to have you here. I was so happy to be here and indeed I think your message is the right one. We are different and it's a good thing and we need to understand this difference to adapt things to different type of people and stopping saying that you have some normal people and the other people. I can confirm, no, we are all somewhere on the spectrum of something. We don't see the same color, we don't have the same taste. So I think we need to acknowledge that and to make a society for everybody. That's my, my view. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah.